I'm gonna to attempt to run the UK economy whilst pretending to be the Chancellor of the Exchequer. Now, I've been an A-level economics tutor for about 15 years. I've worked in finance, and I also run an A-level economics platform called Edgini. And so come and watch me uh, run through as a special advisor to the Prime Minister. Let's see how I do. Let's buckle up. So first, choose your special advisor. Known in Westminster as your SPAD, uh, your advisor should reflect your priorities. They will also give you advice. You can ignore them, but do so with care. Right, who should we be? Sylvia Slicer, Reggie Wellman, Mo Caring, Don Cunnings, Amanda Lancelot. Ooh, I'm gonna be Don Cunnings. Let's have a look if, that, if, if, that's, if, that's, if that's gonna go down well. Let's, let's, let's see. Right, it's high time to turbocharge the British state and take things digital. Oh, I like that. A, a, a guy that is innovative. You can't tolerate four million children in poverty. Invest now. It will pay off later. Okay, I feel bad now. Uh, Britain's entrepreneurial spirit is being stifled. Cut taxes and go for growth. Oh, I, I, it sounds great, but we know what happened last time. If our population is sick, our future is lost. Invest for a healthier nation. Okay, yeah, amazing. I fully agree with that as well. Uh, Amanda Lancelot, a secure nation is a prosperous run. Support our valiant soldiers. I think I will go for, oof, uh, let's go for, let's do something different. Let's go for Reggie Wellman. If our population is sick, our future is lost. Invest for a healthier nation. Ooh, let's see. Chancellor, we're going to make a top team if you invest in the NHS. Cool, I love that. Uh, we have promised to stick to a set of fiscal rules. Keep an eye on the on the on the gorge. You don't want to end up in the red. Okay, I've preset your options to the last budget to get us started. Voters will be watching. I don't really care for politics, but yeah, let's let's have a go. Let's see. Time to set your spending plans. Let's start with health and education. Both are a big chunk of the budget but modernizing the NHS now will pay off down the line. So we wanna do that, make that capital investment. So let's start with health and education, let's see. Okay, let's continue. So what do we need to do? By how much should, in, should real terms health spending increase each year? So we got 3.6% uh, uh, and we've got education. Okay, cool, so let's do this. Oops, we need cuts elsewhere. Okay, all right, let's do this. Let's do healthcare. I think it needs a lot more investment in terms of the quality of care that we're getting. Uh, we want to have those scanners. We want to have those x-rays. We want to have the diagnosis available. So let's have a look. So I'll, I'll increase that from, let's say, 3. Point, was it 3.6 to, let's say, 4.5. And then education. Um, but this is a big budget. Oh, okay. 1%. Oh, maybe, maybe we don't need to increase it by that much. Okay, let's do... 4% each year. I mean, I'm a big believer in education. I think a lot of money should be spent uh, on it per person, per capita. Um, so let's do let's do 2% and 4% on, on healthcare. Because I think with healthcare, there's a lot of a lot of slack, I believe, and we could we could we, we could we could make those cuts accordingly. Right, so let's have a look. This is my opinion, by the way. So budget headroom, cool. What does that mean? This tracks your fiscal performance. You need to meet two rules. Balance the current budget, excluding investment, and put public debt on track to fall as a share of GDP in the final year of your five-year forecast. This gorge shows your progress on the second. On the second, okay. Red means debt is rising. Purple means it's falling. Oh, okay, cool. So we're doing fine. So let's see what happens here. Oh, nothing. All right, let's do four and two percent. Cool. Let's go. Teachers are delighted with plans to invest in education. Primary school head, Eve Wisdom, oh, I love it. It looks like we're finally getting the pay rise we've long argued for. Okay, cool, let's go. Okay, time to target defense and home affairs. Departments such as defense, transport, and energy, these are particularly politically sensitive, and to make matters worse, we've discovered a black hole left by the previous governor. Oh, okay, that sounds familiar. Um, but we've, we must be bold. Don't forget, public services are creaking. Okay, let's have a look. Should defense spending meet our commitment of 2.5% GDP by 2030? Defense spending, uh, we're part of NATO, we're part of UN. Um, I'm gonna reduce this, right? I'm not a war kind of guy, I'm not a fighting kind of, I'm not aggressive. Um, diplomatic relations are, are far, uh, solve far, solve problems in a far better way than, than maybe defense. Um, so let's have a look. Yeah, so 2%. Uh, we'll reduce that. 
Uh, restore overseas aid to 0.7% of GDP by 2030. Oh, there's a lot of controversy over this, right? The only problem I have is where it go how it goes there and how it's distributed. I don't know the answer to that. So I'm going to go 0.4%. I'm going to drop it even more. Uh, not because I don't think we should give aid and none of that. I just feel as though we can create more value in the United Kingdom and then give a proportion of that by creating trade with those other with those other economies that we need to provide. So not just aid, but I think we could provide lots of beneficial bilateral trade with, with, with our counterparties, essentially, okay? We need to make cuts somewhere. So, so the more educated and healthier people we have here, the more educated and healthier people we will have elsewhere as well, if we improve our trade with them. Uh, departments including transport, business, justice, and the home office face real terms spending cuts. How much higher or lower should their budgets be uh, in five years' time? So it should be 22% less. Is that what it's saying? I mean, this is a, you, they're looking at a, a, a cut of what's this? Departments including transport, business, justice, and the home office face real terms spending cuts. Okay, how much higher or lower? So how much lower should their budgets be in five? So 22% lower, right? Okay. Uh, let's go for maybe just, I'm, I'm not sure why it's, they're saying that we're cutting it basically over the next five years. But let's just reduce that a little bit. Maybe we shouldn't cut it so much, especially on transport, business and justice, home office. Yeah, we don't want to really cut it, do we? Um, but let's have a look. Waiting lists are at historic highs. That's why I want to invest in education and, and healthcare. I mean, look, it looks like the budget headroom has gone below zero. Oops. So we need to reduce that back. Waiting lists are at historic highs. So maybe, maybe if we do go back, we will need to go leave it at that 22%. Let's see how what difference that makes. Yeah, so we're in the positive again. Remember, I'm all for education and healthcare. When you're educated and you're healthy, amazing things happen the, the human capital the human development index everything improves okay uh, so let's have a look what we need to do here net investment in our schools hospitals and railways is set to fall from its current level of 2.4 percent of gdp to 1.7 percent what level do you want to choose um, net investment in our school so that's the bit where i want to improve it right Okay, we're very much in the red, in the, we're going towards the red now, oops. So maybe we, could, we can't just increase it like, like that, right? But I'm, I'm all for it. I wanna improve all three of those things. So let's have a look. Benefit spending is around a quarter of government outlays. That's a lot. The link between poverty and poor health is abundantly clear. Let's sustain welfare in real terms, okay. Give families a boost by abolishing the two child limit uh, on low income benefits. No, they're not even, I mean, if you can't, afford to have further kids uh, or you don't have kids or very quite simple right in my eyes so no i will not give that boost save money by pressing ahead with plans to cut winter fuel payments uh for most pension apps no no i'm joking <laughs> no save money by pressing ahead with no i don't think so so if i said yes of course there was a lot of scrutiny there so i'm going to put no on both okay uh, I'm not cutting the winter fuel payments and I'm not giving families a boost by abolishing. Oh, actually, yeah, I'm not abolishing the two child limit. There's a lot of like double negatives going on here. So yeah, let's keep it there. Uh, save money by capping annual increases in child and working age benefits or instead give people a boost by increasing them. Uh, cap at 1%. I would cap at 1%. I'm a big believer on incentives, right? I'm not right wing, left wing, none of that. I don't, I don't talk about it in that sense at all. Don't, so don't put what I say into one bracket or another, okay? I think if, if we have responsibilities uh, by having children, by encouraging uh, uh, the popular, populace to have children, which I think we should, um, I want also at the same time to boost things like uh, entrepreneurship i want them i want the parents to be the best version of themselves to their children as well that's what i don't constantly want right support 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 so what happens is the the incentive to to do well or yeah to work two jobs or to work 
15 hour days. I don't want that to disappear because you need to do those hard things as a parent. Like we all do, I do it, right? So we all have to do it. Okay, so we, this is one of the areas that maybe I'll cut or I'll cap at 1%. Yeah, it might not be politically popular. Let's see, I might be, I might get fired immediately. I don't know. Reform, so welfare, reform the main disability benefit known as the personal independence payment to reduce the number of claims and save the treasury three billion pounds. So it says reform. Is that a good thing or a bad thing? I don't know what that means. So let's go for, yeah, let's reform. If we restrict eligibility, 410,000 people could lose access to the benefit. Care workers are not happy. Okay, let's say no then. Uh, save money, so let's see this one. Save money by linking increases in state pension to average earnings rather than the triple lock, which raises it by the highest of inflation, at average wage increase, or 2.5%. Hmm. I, I agree with that. Let's do that. So we'll do no on that one and yes on this one. Oops. Pensioners have expressed their fury. Okay. The Chancellor is planning to drop the long sacrosanct triple lock. Remember, why, why? what's wrong with that? It's highest of inflation, average wage growth, or 2.5%, right? So oh, Actually, that doesn't make sense, does it? Because it said or. So if 2.5% is the highest, uh, yeah, that's on average wages, right? But then the earnings on the wages might be, on the pensions might be higher. Anyway, maybe I got this wrong. Let's see. Time to set your tax policy. Okay, we've set our parameters for the size of the state. Now it's time to fund it. Cool. Taxes should be increased to pay for our commitments. Remember, you can't please everybody, right? So let's have a look. Raise money by reversing recent national insurance cuts. Let's have a look. Rather than increasing in line with inflation, tax thresholds have been frozen. This means people pay more tax, cancel the freeze and put money in pockets. So tax thresholds have been frozen, okay. Extend the tax threshold freeze for more than two years. Let's see. So maybe uh, we're not gonna increase the, maybe what I would probably do is actually, let's see if what happens there. Um, so give people more money in pockets, but then reverse the national insurance cuts. I'm not sure how big of an impact that would do. I don't think that would be correct to do. What would I do? I would, in this scenario, cause it's, it's not black and white as this, is it? So extend the tax threshold freeze for two more years. So that would probably put money into the government kitty. Uh, yeah, I would I would freeze that, I think. Yeah, let's do that one. A 5p cut to fuel duty is set to expire in 2025. Make this tax cut for motorists permanent instead. Nope, it's an inelastic good. So the government, yeah, happy days. Let's go and just keep charging really high petrol prices. Fuel duty is due to go up in line with inflation each year. Cancel this and give motorists a break. Nope. Remember, we're moving towards a more kind of sustainable electric future. More electric cars means less fuel revenue. Introduce an EV road tax. Oh, so we've reduced the subsidy. Is there a lot of demand for electric vehicles right now? Probably not. Uh, in terms of the secondary market, we're still not sure the longevity of electric vehicles. If we do this, then what's going to happen? We're going to go back to the fact that maybe... Actually, what I'm going to do here is if we introduce an electric vehicle road tax, we're like similar to the fuel tax, uh, the normal road taxes, right? Where we pay two, three, 400 pound, 500 pound a year for the road tax. Because there's a movement in demand from petrol, diesel to electric vehicles as well, and we're building the infrastructure, we're, we're going to ensure that the savings made by driving an electric vehicle, not paying for fuel, maybe paying like 20, 30% of the cost of fuel to charging our cars, we can introduce potentially a uh, an electric vehicle road tax, maybe in some form of caveat. Like we don't want to say, oh, you drive an electric vehicle, like not as a, 
emissions tax, but maybe as a, a tax on congestion, right? Something like that. So maybe remove like the ULES on electric vehicles, where electric vehicles potentially get exemptions from ULES. We don't want that. So maybe, yeah, let's introduce a road tax. We do need to meet our climate goals, but I'm here to challenge the status quo. Let's have a look. Deliver labour pledges to put VAT on private school fees, increase the taxes imposed on private equity firms and non-DOMs and tax excess energy. You can't put all of that under one bracket either. Like, you can't put tax excess energy profits with increased taxes imposed on private equity firms. What, what are the taxes on private equity firms? So this is a bit... Obviously, too basic. So, I, for example, would I increase VAT? Would I put VAT on there? I, I would. I would put VAT on there if I'm going to make sure that the infrastructure is available in the public state system. Then that's fine. And make sure that the public state system and the school system is going to be fantastic and be able to handle loads of students. Remember, seven percent of students are privately school, privately educated. Nothing wrong with that. Okay. But if you're going to charge tax, it's just going to lead to more inequality. Increase taxes on imposed private equity firms. Your parents, my parents, mine, my, your teachers, their, their pensions are in private equity firms. So the, the idea of like, taxing private equity firms more and more and more, it, it doesn't really, it's just going to cost you more. <laughs> it's going to cost us more essentially so singling them out might not be appropriate depends on how they do it non doms yeah but potentially those non doms are just going to go to dubai they're going to saudi arabia they're going to singapore hong kong they're going to go to delaware miami they're going to go to texas that's where they're going to go so would we rather have those millionaires in the uk the answer is yes do we want them creating value in the uk the answer is yes so and if they're being rewarded for being successful and providing value for providing value for people, like for their customers, and they become rich and wealthy as a result, so be it. So I don't know, we just need to figure out what the tax uh, implementation is there. Tax and excess energy profits, I would potentially. I, I think energy should be a form, like it should be like nationalized almost in this country. So what would I put here? Oh, so this is increasing taxes. We're already in the red, we're already in the green, sorry. So I'm gonna put no for now, because I don't, I don't agree with maybe, I don't agree, I only agree with this really right now. So, like if you're looking at it from a simplistic perspective. So let's just put no. Raise or lower income tax, all right. Uh, raise or lower income tax, raise or lower revenues from businesses through corporation tax and business rates. What I would do is I would increase VAT, but that's not an option here. Let's have a look. So raise or lowering for who? Who are we increasing it to? I don't know. If we make people pay more income tax, okay. Um, raise or lower revenues from corporation tax and business rates. Raise revenues, how do we? No, because I think businesses uh, pay, they hire lots of people. Uh, what I would do, I think it was fine before, like it was 20%, like dropping it to 19. Let's do this. I would. Let's lower. I would be in favor of lowering. Let's, let's try this. I don't want to charge income tax either, to be fair. Let's just leave it there. Let's see what happens. I reckon it's going to be, okay, budget. So break even, yeah? How much do we collect each year by raising or lowering taxes on pension contributions? Raise more from capital gains tax and inheritance tax or less. But do you see what I mean? You're you're introducing you're introducing a you're saying capital gains and inheritance tax are the same thing. Like that that's not really fair, is it? Like capital gains tax and inheritance tax are completely different things. Capital gains tax hurts even a, a normal person. So let's have a look. Right, how much will we collect each year by raising or lowering interest or lowering taxes on pension contributions? Right, we can maybe raise more from capital gains, a little bit more from, I would just say from inheritance, I don't even know. Let's do from inheritance tax and from, by raising or lowering taxes on pension contributions. Oh, on contributions. Yeah, let's do contributions. Let's do that. Okay, time to deliver your budget. Am I, let's see, 
We have time to pull a few rabbits out of the hat. Let's make the front page right. Let's go. What are these? Spend two billion a year extending home buyer stamp duty break. Pay for free meals for all primary school kids. Lower VAT on public electric vehicle charging. Oh, I'm gonna go for pay for free meals for all pri primary school kids because I believe in education and everyone should have the same opportunities. Right, okay, let's do that. Oof. I don't know what's gonna happen here. Look, we're here right now. I reckon this will put us to the left of the zero. So it could be horribly wrong. The lower VAT will not be, won't be too much on this. But anyway, I, I'm happy with that. And let me know, let me know in the comments as well if this is something that you're, uh, that, that you agree, that you agree with. Let's see, let's see. Ooh, let's see if I've made, made it into politics. I'm feeling confident, Chancellor, but that's what I'm paid to say. Ready? Let's go. Okay, let's have a look. Prime Minister Hope Hall. All right, did you stick to your fiscal rules? Yes, you have met your fiscal rules, but markets question whether your budget will be sustainable given the spending cuts you've introduced. Yeah, fair enough. The government is considering a change to its debt target to create more scope for borrowing to invest. Using this alternative gorge, you would also meet your fiscal rules. Oh, look at that. Current budget deficit. We're gonna go into a bit more of a deficit. Okay, cool. So instead of around minus, what's that, minus 0.2%, we're gonna go into about uh, minus 1%-ish. Okay, fair enough, uh, of GDP. So basically we're going into a, four, sorry, it's, we're, going into a four, we're going into a surplus, amazing. Why did I not even think of that? So great. So basically we're gonna be a positive net contributor to reducing national debt, amazing. Because why? Because we managed to do it, we managed to keep it positive. We, basically, yeah, we've, we've increased some money. Public sector net debt is still gonna go up, but essentially we're going to kind of taper off. It's gonna be more diminishing. Relative to, let's see, public services and welfare, relative to inherited plans, you've lowered day-to-day -day spending by three billion pounds a year. Cool, by 2930, 2029, 2020, 2030. You have taken a tough outlook for spending and made it even worse. All right, sorry. Um, uh, the cuts will take a heavy toll. Investment, relative to inherited plans, you've raised investment by 23 billion a year. That's what I'm talking about. Taking public investment to 2.4% of GDP, amazing. You have canceled some of the inherited cuts in investment as a share of GDP, absolutely. We increase our proportion of investment, not to cut it. But you may need to go further to see big improvements in railways, I agree with you. Taxes are set to rise by 15 billion pounds a year. Uh, relative to inherited plans, taking the amount of tax imposed on individuals and tax businesses to 37.6%. Cool, so I've increased taxes, increased investment, so in the long run, that benefits the United Kingdom, benefits England, right? Um, and whilst cutting government spending as well, a little bit. So do you see, so it, it, potentially, look, tax revenue is actually going up, right? So, and we, we're seeing more investment. So let's see what, what impact this might have. Uh, let's see. Oh, is that it? Oh, fair enough. Okay. I was expecting like GDP growth. What's the multiplier effect? Have I missed it? Nope. But Prime Minister, frustrated with your result? No, I'm happy with it. Is, are we happy? Let me know if, if this is what you were expecting. Really fun game. Make sure you play it as well. So yeah, let's have a look. Yeah, great. Brilliant. So we've achieved what we were meant to achieve. Fantastic.